What's up, everybody? It's Brandon, and I'm back with another Top 5 Thursday. This time, I'm doing something very near and dear to me. Yes, that's right, a Top 5 Steven Seagal list. And I know 90% of the world hates this guy, and honestly, I don't really have much to defend. But I can say this much, um, huge nostalgia for me. Um, not just Van Damme, but Seagull in that era. Oh, shit, that's a Van Damme shirt right now. I actually didn't really even think about that, but I wore that to a Seagull video, and they don't really like each other, like, legit. I always kind of wish they, like, fought behind the scenes so we could see, like, who a true runner was. They were hot at the right time, and Seagull being Seagull, I think he was a little jealous of Van Damme, and he wanted all the credit. I think he's kind of you know, humbled himself a little bit in his later years, thankfully, but he's just got that bad asterisk, man. But one thing you can't do is take away how great the man was. And I have a top five here, and uh, one of them, you will be like, what? How is that not on here? So I'm just going to say it. Under Siege is not on here. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Um... My top five of Seagull is all pretty close. I will say this much. I normally don't do honorable mentions. Under Siege would be number six. And, you know, debatably might even be top five. I love the movie. Tommy Lee Jones, Nick Nolte, not Nick Nolte, bleh, Gary Busey, I should say. I used to mix them up a lot when I was a kid for some reason. But they're so good. And Seagull is so good as the cook. But you know me, I don't like to put more than one of the same movie on here, as in within the same franchise. So I had to choose which one I liked the best. And uh, that one is Under Siege 2. So Under Siege 2 is at 5. And I think a whole lot of what this has to do with is nostalgia. When I was a kid, this was my second favorite Seagull movie. It was probably like in my top 20 movies at one point. I just fucking love this movie. Now some people might say this is kind of when... He started falling off, and I can even agree that Under Siege 1 is objectively the better movie, but Under Siege 2 was just my jam as a kid, and you know that effect that it has on you when you have that movie that is your jam when you're a kid. You can't get enough of it. There's this like fill-in in the back of your mind. Even the movies you think that are god-awful as an adult, not saying Under Siege 2 is, but for example, movies that you think are god-awful as an adult, you can still find some joy in them just because of the joy you had for it as a kid. But, I mean, come on, man. There was some good things to be had here. The main villain, I think he was kind of annoying and not all that great. But, you know, he had that, like, second-in-command guy played by, I wrote this down, actually. I'm a little more prepared. Played by Garrett McGill, dude. And this guy, I always forget his damn name. Glad I wrote it down because he deserves the recognition. In one of my favorite horror movies, and the people under the stairs. He was in Silver Bullet, another Gary Busey movie right there. But, I mean, he's been in so many good movies, man. Very underrated actor. And he was a capable and pretty, you know, intimidated, intimidating villain. And they had a great fight scene at the end, probably one of Seagull's best. And, of course, Seagull with, you know, those patented one-liners after he snaps his fucking neck. He's just like, nobody beats me in the kitchen. Fucking love it, dude. Damn. Under Siege 2 is that fucking jam. Um, at number four, we're going to kick it back to where it all started with Above the Law. And let me say out the gates, dude. This movie mesmerized me. Might have been the first one I saw. I mean, it's the first one most people saw because most people were seeing Seagull when he debuted, whereas I was born two years after Above the Law, 91. I think Above the Law was 89, maybe 88. But... I love the intro, and it's not just the music. The music, dun, 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 dun. The music, fucking legendary. A1 music right there to set you up. But you also have Seagull with, like, actual, like, baby pictures of him explaining why he got into martial arts. And then it cuts to the movie where he's kind of, like, sitting Indian style amongst his class. And there's something about that scene. I think it has to do with like the real life pictures and stuff like that. And it being the introduction, I think that definitely elevates it. But that feels the most like his actual like training, you know, and stuff you've seen where he had his dojo and he was taking on his class where he was doing that patented Seagull like clothesline and flipping you around and you're just trying to stand up. And he's like, oh, 
get right back down. Oh, you try and get up? Up, oh, get right back down. Seagal was so good at that type of shit. I mean, that's that's his fucking style, dude. That's what he had always just dedicated himself to. And he not only did that style so good, he incorporated his own flavor with it, with the broken bones. And I don't even know if that fucking, you know, whatever the fuck that is, the clothesline from hell, not to bring out some Al Bradshaw finishing moves, but or that like front kick. I don't even know if that's necessarily in Aikido. I should call out the style, right, for those of you that don't know. But he just, he took, it's almost like what Bruce Lee did. He took Aikido, but he also put that flair on it, man. And when you see him in that dojo at the beginning of that movie, after all that buildup, that it's not a lot of buildup, but it's like a minute and a half of like, oh, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. And then, boom, music kicks in even harder. And you see him flipping people. And now later on in life, you've seen that footage because you became a Seagull fan and you go back to that movie. That shit really holds up. And I love that a lot, dude. Um, potentially, maybe his most like gritty film. I don't know. That's uh, tough. There's another one on this list that I think could also crack that list. But there's something about Above the Law that has just a raw and gritty feel that I love about it. It feels more bare bones, more like complimentary of Seagull's breaking bones type of style. Like it feels so in the right place in that movie. It meshes so damn well and i mean the movie in general story not too bad for this kind of movie and you know there's some cool scenes especially like in the parking garage where that dude's like on the back of his car and he just says fuck it and like turns around puts in reverse slams into the parking garage you know wall mind you they're on like the 10th floor and the guy flings off and falls to his death there's some great things above the law great fucking movie man um, at number three, <sighs> this is tough, dude. It's tough. I'm going to go with hard to kill. Yes. Hard to kill. Um, hard to rank this here. Um, another one of my favorite Seagull scenes in the beginning where he's just, he's in that gas station. There's a robber. I think it's a liquor store, actually, whatever the fuck it is. And he even, he's like, what am I? I get it. Like, I'm too big for you. I'll get down on my knees. He's like, he gives him the gun. He does all of that. Still snaps dude's leg. That guy that was playing the bad guy has been a bad guy in every movie. Probably every Seagull movie on top of that. Uh, it's just an amazing scene that sets the tone immediately. Like, okay, this dude is still kicking ass because that was still so early in his career. And you knew, like, man, this guy's just getting better and better, ain't he? Um, and then it has the weird development that's also really cool uh Seagull in all his movies is untouchable he's whooping everybody's ass you can't touch him and that's part of the reason why I always like Van Damme back in the day slightly more I like more of the comeback story I like the feeling of he can get hit and then make the comeback and turn the whole fight around Seagull it was like if he got punched it was like did he just get punched and I know he what he was going for he's like I want to look invincible that's cool, but more of my style is, you know, it, more realistic. You can get beat up, things like that. And it makes it more entertaining when you're rooting for the underdog when they come back. So Goal could not be fucking touched in his movies. So it was a weird kind of dichotomy and hard to kill when he goes home after that and he's with his wife and they break into his house and he gets fucking lit up by bullets. And let me give Seagull this much. I think this is Seagull's best acting. When he gets shot right there, that scene is so intense. I mean, so intense. Then, like, they shoot his wife, and he's like, no! And then, like, he gets shot up even more. And it's just, like, the, the scene is intense as fuck. And Seagull really may be the biggest reason for that, beyond, like, the sound design and everything else around it that made it so good. Seagull's acting in that scene. He sells getting fucked up and just crying not actually crying but like crying screams of like my wife just got murdered and now i'm getting murdered what's to happen next you know that uncertainty he nails that scene one of the best acting performances i've ever seen from him because he's usually so lifeless but in that scene when he was about to be lifeless anybody else probably would have been but it's a goal right <laughs> he really brought the life to the screen love that about it um other you know great quotes like i'm gonna take you to the bank the blood bank. I mean, come on. How can you forget this kind of shit? Um, when he was uh, in his rehabilitation, like I was going, saying, it was cool seeing him be vulnerable. 
through all that is what I was kind of getting at. Uh, it was just, it was different, you know, it was something different for Seagal. He was never vulnerable before. Here, he barely do anything, and he's got to build himself up. I always loved that about Hard to Kill. Um, there was something else I was about to say about it. Um, yes, uh, this scene, when he's in the hospital, and he wakes up from his, like, coma, and he knows that these bad guys are coming for him. It is one of the most unintentionally funny things that's ever happened in the movie. And it's not one of those things like, this is ruining the movie. It makes it so much better. And maybe now that I tell you this, you'll think it's funny. Because Seagal can barely move because he just got out of a coma. And he's like, you guys, you don't understand. I got to get out. And they, like, pull him in the other room. And he just, every, and they move him to a new doctor. And he's trying to talk to this doctor like, oh, seriously, I, you, these guys, they're, they're, he's like half away. They're trying to kill me. And they put him in another room. <laughs> and then there's another dude that flips him over. He's like face down. And Seagull's like, seriously, guys, I just, I'm about to be murdered. Please get me out of here. And this guy's like, oh, you just hang right in there, buddy. He's like giving him a massage and just watching him struggle like that. He's just like, I'm trying to tell you, I'm about to be killed. And everybody's like, yeah, sure thing. Here's a massage. Like, I don't know. That whole way that plays out kills me out every time funny as shit to me and then of course even like i don't even know it was crazy how he did it like his hospital escape because he had to like slowly get movement back and somehow escape it was very entertaining watching that and of course the grand finale he gets his revenge as usual great ending for a Seagull movie hard to kill is hard to pass up great flick at number three um at number two we're going to have to go without for justice, where you have that Seagull accent. Hey, Richie! <laughs> I don't even know how to do it. I, not as bad as what a lot of people say, but it is a little jarring. I think I'm a little more used to it than most. But I will give him this. I think a lot of people give him too much shit for that. But the movie as a whole? Fucking badass. And you got to give Seagull some credit for, you know, trying to just do something a little different. You know, he's not like doing Shakespeare in love over here, but he's trying a different accent. He's doing that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, I got to tell you, William Forsyth in this movie is maybe the most intimidating villain out of every villain in the Seagulls movies. Like, it's he's so good. From the moment you see this dude, you're like, this dude's bad news. He just murdered somebody. You're like, hey, I'm just meeting this guy. And then he's in traffic, and this girl's like, come on, let's go. He walks over, yanks her head out the car, puts a gun to the corner of her head, blows her fucking head off, and leaves her hanging outside of her car. And they're like, damn it, Bridget. Like, it's just immediately. There's no question about it. This dude does not give a fuck. And, I mean, it goes further. Like, he shoots a guy in a wheelchair at one point. He is not fucking around for the totality of this movie. And I love it so damn much, dude. Um, and then, uh, let's just ju- I'll jump out toward the end on this one. I mean, this one, for me, it's amazing. But it's mainly because of Forsyth's performance. Or it might be Forsyth. I've never known how to say his name. But uh, the bad guys. And it's mainly Forsyth just really win me over in this one. And Seagull's doing his typical Seagull shit. I mean, it's kind of fun along the way because he's always, like, going up into bars and other shit. Like, you give me some information on this? Like, he's, and then they don't. He's beating the shit out of them. <laughs> you know, the whole movie basically till the end. And then he's got the shotgun, and he's just, he's badass with it, dude. And I believe uh, Kane Hodder, uh, the guy that played Jason and... uh New Blood, Part 7, Jason Takes Manhattan, Part 8, Jason Goes to Hell, Part 9, Jason X, Part 10, the guy that's played Jason the most, he's in the movies, like one of the people uh, Seagull kills at the end, which was kind of cool. And then the fight with him and Richie, even though fucking William Forsyth's kind of overweight in this movie, doesn't really look in shape, he was looking good in the fight. And to my understanding, he did a lot of his own stunts. So he's getting, like, flung around. He's flying into walls. You know how it is. He's going to punch him, talk shit, and the goal just ducks up out the way. He's like, bitch, go over there. And then it culminates in just an absolutely masterful corkscrew to the head stabbing right in the fucking forehead, dude. It's a gory, beautiful mess. Love that fucking movie, and you love to see Forrest get it like that after the amount of asshole he portrayed, and he did so well. Out for justice at number two. Number one, 
Oh, my God. I have a lot to say about this one, but we'll see uh, if, I, if I say it all. Maybe I should, maybe I don't. We're already 15 minutes in. Um, Mark for Deaf, man. This one, I don't know. Remember how I said Under Siege 2 is my second favorite? And that kind of dipped a little bit. Still love it. This one's been my favorite my whole life. Hasn't changed. I love... I mean, Williams Force, I said he might be the most intimidating villain. Screwface, all that shit with the Jamaicans as a whole. I just love them as fucking villains, man. Keith David is kind of his right-hand man. I fucking... Love some Keith David. Anytime he you throw him in a movie as, you know, the sidekick or whatever. Psh, they live, people. Any shit like that. Even fucking The Thing. And he wasn't really a sidekick because, you know, him and uh, McCready didn't really get along. But, you know, Childs was still a cool-ass character. And he was, like, the next guy up on the casting. He just fills that, like, secondary role so damn well and so seamlessly. Loved him in this. I lo- especially love when they... Uh, Broke into the uh, the diamond, the diamond jewelry place, dude. Glass. I mean, I can't even tell you if you haven't seen this movie how much fucking glass got shattered everywhere in that place. Every five seconds, Seagull is just. I mean, Seagull's already throwing people left and right. So why not put glass everywhere <laughs> so people are not just getting thrown? They're getting shattered by glass, and they are shattering the glass. It's like a Double fucking doozy, dude. Gotta love that shit. And of course, he's still over here breaking fucking arms and what have you. Um, there is one line that I wish I would have wrote down. But it's a line... I don't know if I can do it on the spot. Ah, it's one of those things I feel like if you'd asked me a year ago, I would have had it. Because I just rewatched all these movies about a year ago. Typically do something around that. Usually a yearly run with Seagull. Maybe it's time again. Maybe starting tonight. But he takes one of the Jamaican guys and throws him out the fucking window. And he says something. What does he say? He comes down and he sits there with Keith David. And he's like, he's like, I gave him an ultimatum or something. It's pro- it's my favorite fucking line that Seagull says in a movie. And I don't even have it. Someone fill me in on that because I feel like an idiot right now. Um, <laughs> I gotta tell you too, mm, 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 mm. I love the twist to this movie with the screw face and him having a twin. I didn't see that coming at all. And for me, when I was a kid, I was, I didn't even know what happened. I'm like, he's resurrected from the dead. I was like the rest of his homies and shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's the voodoo magic. Yeah. Then I get older. I'm like, oh, it's a twin. That makes more sense. And so cool, dude. It's such a simple thing to do, but it really shocked me. Even as an adult, I'm like, this twist works. I enjoy it. And uh, you get another, like, bonus fight. It feels like you're like, okay, this is over. This is a pretty fucking good movie, dude. Maybe is best. And then I know where you're like, oh, I haven't even seen the best fight scene yet. And him and Screwface go at it, dude. I mean, that is fucking amazing. And when he fucking snaps him and throws him down the elevator shaft... That's how you finish off a villain. Villain. <laughs> villain. So go. Kills it. And then lastly, I will leave y'all with this. This is something I've never heard anybody talk about. And I discovered recently. Hopefully this doesn't sound like dog shit on this mic. Because I'm not going to edit all this in. Rodney's a genius with editing. I got too much shit going on. Luckily I have Rodney. But he doesn't edit my top five Thursdays. Maybe if I beg him, maybe he'll start doing that. Eh, and they're only like 15-minute videos. Normally, this one looks like it's about to go like 22 minutes. Uh, so, Goal, that song that that Jamaican guy sings in the bar, that screw face, you know that your time has come. Such a damn good song. But there's an intro to that song that has always been like, dude, that is so dope. It's so soothing. And once I figured this out, I couldn't unhear it. I was like, how did I not realize this? But Steven Seagal sings the intro to that song. And I know a lot of people say Seagal acts like he can do everything. He's fake here. He's fake here. And they act, you know, question the validity of some of the shit he says. He's even said he's in the fucking CIA or was at one point. (laughs) He's got a lot of crazy shit. But I do know one thing. He can kick ass. And I do know two things. Dude can sing. Because this intro right here is fire. Try to tell me it isn't. 
And if you're like, what song am I he talking about? This is the track, dude. This is the goal this whole time. Because if you watch this movie, you had to have heard it. Murdered that, dude. I'm trying to hear a whole track like that. So go kill that shit. And yes, hopefully I'm blowing your mind with that. I know I told Josh that and he was like me. Because I, when I told him, I found out like a month prior. I was just lost on this knowledge too. And the whole time I was like, how the fuck did I never notice that? Because when I heard it, it was like, couldn't piece two and two together. But afterwards, I was like, it's so obvious that's him. So go, man. Might be an asshole, but you're talented, and people try to take that from you, and they are liars. But that is my top five Steven Seagal movies. I hope you guys enjoy. And this is also the fucking sweaty blah, blah, blah edition, because, yeah, all kinds of other shit. Maybe I should have wore a Seagal shirt, but whatever. We got the Van Damme shirt on the Seagal review. And I didn't wear a Van Damme shirt on the Van Damme review. I'm going to get this right one day. Oh, my God. My legs, my...